Well, I'm excited about 2020. I'm excited about what, what God is doing. And to start 2020 off, the Lord really spoke to me about two things, unlimited and focus. And God was really bringing it to me about what I, that one phrase that Miles Monroe has that just sticks out in my spirit. You know, you can have what you can manage. And the Lord has been speaking to me about get ready to start managing what is coming. So if what you've been believing for what would you say if I said you were the reason maybe something wasn't happening yet? See, a lot of times we always put it on God, and a lot of times there's timing and there's different things. But what I want to always do is one of my old sayings, pray like it all depends on God, work like it all depends on me. But over the past few weeks, I have felt the anointing of God, the favor of God start to flow in some things that I didn't see happening I got myself in a better position, and then they started flowing. So my job is to pray and then do what I can do, but then allow the anointing of the Lord to take over. So when I got ready to prepare for this, the Lord spoke to me one word. I didn't understand it at first, but the Lord said, for the first message of the year, preach on communion. I said, communion? We preach on fasting the first of the year. That's week number two. We're going to talk about communion today. And this is what I want you to realize. We're talking about prepare for rain. Well, this is a scripture that I want to bring out. This is Matthew 9, 37, 38. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Okay, let's think about this. If the harvest is plentiful, that means it had to rain, right? So we already know that prophetically God said, talk about prepare for rain. That means there's a lot of seed in the ground. Because God never sends revival or an overflow unless there's a lot of seed in the ground. So that means there's a lot of seed in you and your family and in our region and in our nation. So we know there's a seed. We're preparing for rain. But the Lord says that the harvest is going to be plentiful, but the laborers are few. Well, two months ago, God gave me a word about prepare the people and then don't misuse what I give you. And now it's all time together. The Lord, about two weeks ago, y'all tracking with me? About two weeks ago, the Lord said, Start, start talking about revival again. Start talking about awakening again. Roar, revival, outpouring, awakening, reformation. The Lord said, I'm, I'm going to put back in your heart a strong passion to see revival and the power of God sweep and sweep through your region. And, and so, I'm trying to finish the scripture. It says, therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest that he would send out labors into his harvest. When God raises up labors, that is because he is about to bring a harvest. I'm telling you, what we can build, he's going to fill. So in all of this, as I was praying, the Lord really started just speaking to me about why some people can't move forward in some things. And I always tell people, you know, just read your word and pray. But recently, I've had other people call me and say, hey, I don't know what to do. I'm reading every day. I'm praying every day. But i got to have more. And the Lord started speaking to me. Start talking about fasting more. And even start talking about communion with me more to people. And so the Lord's been doing a, a deep work because I see what is coming. So the word communion means this, the sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when the exchange is on a mental or spiritual level. Now, whenever people prophesy, oh, uh, acceleration and advancement and great things are coming, that's good, and we get excited, but also know the enemy is going to fight, but we have victory. We fight from victory, not for it. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. So we understand that. But we're not dumb to the fact that he's going to fight. I was up for three hours in the middle of the night, two to five in warfare. And I said, oh, we got some warfare tonight. That means we're going to have a little bit of revival tomorrow. I'm not scared of warfare. I'll welcome it. We'll, we'll go for it because we know what is coming. But then what the Lord was speaking to me about, as God starts to elevate you in different areas, you know, like when if you're at the bottom of the totem pole at work but when you nobody talks bad about the per person on the bottom but when you get elevated they'll talk bad about you you know somebody that's uh, the the last string player on a football team or basketball team you don't hear about the sports um, commentaries talking bad about them they talk about the people at the top 
Why, does communion, why is communion so powerful? Because it keeps you right with God and it keeps you humble with God. Uh, a lot of people have told me that God has advanced them in business. I had a gentleman say, man, I have a construction crew and I used to have 40 people. And, and it wore me out to now I just have two. He said, I, I, don't want, I thought I wanted more, but then I couldn't take what was coming with it. So here's what communion does. Communion is when you're exchanging the intimate thoughts and feelings the Lord will start to deal with you spiritually. The Lord will start to deal with you mentally, and you will be able to handle it. There's a lot of times I talk to people who are doing great things, and they've had huge advancements in their life, and it doesn't even bother them because they understand how when they have communication with God and they have communion on a regular basis, it changes everything. Some of y'all know Josh Sherratt. He told me one time, he said, before I make any big decision in my life, I take 14 days to have communion with the Lord every night. And if it's a really, really big decision, I take a full month to have communion with the Lord every night. Just not praying, just not fasting, but pulling aside and having that communion with God. And, and I've been preaching at y'all for two years about you better get ready because something is about to break in your life. And I'm just going to tell you one more time in case you forgot. Something is about to break in your life and it's going to be good. See, this is what communion does. Communion is a natural um, release to receive a spiritual release. You, you step up in the natural and you, you take the bread, you, you, you take the juice, you know, you take that in, but it releases something. What is tithing? It's the same way. You pull your money or your plastic out and you give it in. Well, there's principles tied into that for a release to happen. It's the same way with prayer. The Bible says, you know, the fervent prayer of a man avails much. When we fervently pray, when we cry out to God, things start to happen. You, you got to understand water baptism. There is a natural side of it. You got to get in the water. Somebody got to dunk you. You know, they're going to bring you up. But, but there's something that happens on the other side of it. And that's what we must understand why communion is so powerful. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Now, transgression means this. Going against the law, the rule, or a code. So when it says he was wounded for our transgression... You know what that means? It means he was wounded because we went against the law of God, the rules of God, and the code of God. When we went against something, he took that upon us. Chastisement means scolding or punishing someone. So when it says that the chastisement was for our peace, he took on the scolding. He took on the punishment so that you could have peace in your life. Do any of you have any peace in your life? Do you have just peace? He took that. He took the, the burdens upon you. Iniquity means immoral or sinful because of your past. Hopefully it's your past. Sinful or immoral nature. He took on the iniquities. Now, here's what I want to talk about. And then it says, and by his stripes, we are healed. Well, what is stripes? The torn flesh of Jesus Christ. Now, when I think about the flesh, I'm just going to tell you how I see it. I imagine the 39 stripes, 40 stripes would kill somebody. That's why the harshest punishment was 39. If it wasn't a punishment to death, they wanted to beat you to death, right up to the point of death. I, I see the pictures of Jesus' back and how they were torn. And I see where, where, where two of the lashes may have met. In that corner, there's a little piece of flesh sticking up. Some of y'all may think this is grotesque, but when I take communion, that's the piece of his back that I see. When, when I take the cup... I see Jesus on the cross in my mind. This is how, how I see it. The blood dripping off of his feet as it runs down. That is the cup that I take. I just don't see a wafer or grape juice, but that is what I see. Communion is the torn body of Christ. And this is what's so powerful for it. You know, if you're going through an infirmity, you can take communion. For, and I challenge you to do this. When you're going through a physical infirmity, you take communion for seven days and say, quote the scripture. Quote the scriptures and say, this, this is your flesh. I partake of this. The Bible says, and I love quoting the scripture. I mean, back to the Lord. I mean, he knows it, but I still quote it back to him. And it says, and by his stripes, we are healed. So by your stripes, I am healed. And I take communion. 
I was watching some videos on communion this week of testimonies, and these people were like, man, I had this or I had that, and I went to the doctor, and they gave me all this medicine. I spent all my life saving. I spent all this money, wore my insurance company out. Nothing happened. I took communion for 10 days, got healed. So many people, you, you can't forsake. People, the Bible says people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. A lot of people don't take communion when they're going through something. If I'm going through something and I say, Jesus, you went to the cross for what I'm going through, I'm not going to go through it without taking communion. There's a release that happens. So 1 Corinthians 11, we'll start in 27. It says, whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let, let the person examine himself therefore before he does. So he eats the bread and drinks of the cup. For continually eating and drinking with the wrong spirit will bring judgment upon yourself for not recognizing the body. This insensitivity towards this is why many people are weak, chronically ill, and even some asleep. One translation, even some to death. That's in the word. <laughs> Y'all got me? That's in the word. Okay, take a break. I got to go back to First Baptist New Boston when I was 14 years old. I love communion. And here's why. We had this one crazy family in our church. And it was, I'm not going to go into detail, but they, was, they were hilarious. Well, they believed this scripture. So here's what happened. Whenever they would get ready to, to pass communion by them, all the youth were so excited to see what was about to happen. She would look at her husband and go, no, uh-uh. You ain't taking this. You've been talking to that old girl. I, you don't take this communion. And we're like, this is great. And then it went to her kid. No, your teacher called me. I know what you've been doing, sneaking out. You better not take this. And we're like, yeah. I mean, it was a straight laced Baptist church. And I was like, I love this. This was great. But then one time, Big Nanny said, Do you know why she acts like that? I said, Why? And Big Nanny got me. She said, Because she understands the scripture. Now, what I would do when I first got back in church after rededicating my life the seventh time, is when they would have communion, I didn't want to run out um, and look bad, so I would repent of everything I could think about. And I would say, oh, Lord, cleanse me, heal me, Lord, forgive me for anything I can think about. But you got to understand why this is so good. This is one of the most intimate things you'll ever do with the Lord. You will get before the Lord, and, and you will say, Lord, I'm partaking of this. This is what you did for me. And you keep that fresh in your life. I promise you, when you do this, you cannot have offense towards other people. When you do this, you, you can't have unforgiveness in your heart. When, when you do this, some things are going to shift. Man, I love praying, and I love fasting, and I, I do those. But when I take communion, it, it is when I personally am the weakest and most vulnerable, and yes, I cry. Because I never can forget what the Lord has done for me. And a lot of times people... Just their walk with God, they just, you know, they say their prayers, they do everything right and they're good. But sometimes they forget the communion aspect of actually stopping and thinking about what Jesus Christ actually did for you. Me, personally, I have a hard time looking at pictures of Jesus on the cross. It just, I just, that type of love is, I just can't wrap my mind around that much love. And, and when I see the, the pictures of Christ in the movies like Passion of the Christ and things like that, it just, it, I'm moved by his love and compassion for mankind. So when you take communion, make sure that your heart is right before you do it. Don't let unforgiveness or offense ever stop you. Don't let circumstances or situations stop you. And, and this is why one thing is good about taking communion. When you take communion, you speak and prophesy to your future like never before. And I, I get before the Lord, and, and this is one thing I, I want you to understand. Worship services like this are good, but your best worship should be you and Him. I love a good Bible study. Your best Bible study is you and the Word. And I, I love prayer meetings at the barn, 7 o'clock on Tuesday nights, 9 a.m. in the kids' church room for service. I love prayer meetings. But my best prayer time is me and the Lord, 5 a.m., just one-on-one. We're going to do communion in a minute, and it's good in here. But when you have one-on-one communion with the Lord, 
It, it is the most powerful time you will ever have with him when it's just you and him being so open and so vulnerable with the Lord. It's, it's just, it changes everything. You know, when, when the Lord shows you your true heart, when you're taking communion, you, you just reveal it. You just verbalize things. There's times that, that I have, I remember one time I was on a 21-day fast, not Daniel. We was straight up getting it. And I was, I was going on a fast, and at the end of it, I was going to do communion. I think in, in the last five minutes of communion, I got more out of it than the whole 21 days because I was at such a vulnerable place with the Lord. And I don't know about, about you, but there's a few of us that there's a time in your life you just felt like you were hitting roadblocks. And, and you're like, God, I've prayed, I've fasted, I, I've given, I gave all my money and some other people's money. I'm just giving. I'm just anything I can find. I just, I ever wanted to give, you just sold something just to give. And I'm like, God, what else is it? And the Lord will speak to me and say, communion. Let's just you and me just, let's just sit down and let's take communion. And so when you take upon the communion, you start off with the heart of gratitude towards the Lord and it starts to change. Private communion is one of the most powerful things you'll ever do. But here's something it is not. It is not a religious ritual or, or a tradition that we do. A lot of times, if you don't fully understand it, and you're asking, why in the world are you starting this decade, this year, with communion? Because where your God wants you to go, you can't go there without it. Because you will get elevated to a place and somebody will hurt your feelings, a situation will knock you down. But when you have full trust in God and an open heart and an open communication, he'll get you there. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to get there. And I'm going to take as many people as I can with me. So... The thing is, it's just an intimate act with him. And when you do this, you commemorate the life and the death of Christ. That's why in a lot of churches, they have a communion table. and It says, do this in remembrance of me. When you take communion, you are talking about the very life of Jesus. And it's so funny how many believers, I say, hey, why did Jesus come to the earth? People answer differently. They don't ever, they say, uh, he died on the cross for our sins. I'm like, that's great. What else? What do you mean, what else? He always talked about the kingdom. Luke 4, 43, the reason I came was to preach and teach about the kingdom through all the areas, all the synagogues and the temples. They said, oh, yeah. And he also came for our healing. See, a lot of people don't even understand how many times the scripture says, by his straps, we are healed. We were healed. He went to the cross also for us to understand about healing, to walk in the manifestation of that. Y'all with me? 1 Corinthians 10 16, it says, the cup of blessing which we bless, it is not the communion of the blood of Christ. And the bread which we break, it's not the communion of the body. For when we pray for the blessing of the communion cup, isn't it our co-participation with the blood of Jesus Christ? Can you, woo, can you wrap your mind around that? And the bread as we distribute it, isn't it just, it's the bread of us co participating with the body of Christ. I mean, this is an intimate act right there. Then 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, 24, and he gave thanks and he distributed it to the disciples. And he said, take this and eat your fill. It is my body, which I give to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time we do communion, it is in remembrance of the Lord. And when I do it, I, 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 a lot of times I do it when I'm at a low moment. And I say, God, I just don't see what you keep telling me. I hear what everybody says. I see my struggles. I see my shortcomings. I see physical infirmities. I see financial lack. And then when I take communion, it's like he shows up. And then he speaks. And I'm like, well, how come I didn't see this before? Because I took a step further. I tell people when, when, when they, they need a breakthrough in a word from the Lord, go on a fast. He'll speak. Go, go into some communion. Do 10 days of communion. Do three days of communion. And spend that time with the Lord. It changes everything. And then it said, he did the same with the cup after supper and said, the cup seals the new covenant with my blood. The new covenant is sealed when we do this. It says, drink it. And whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. And I love this part. 
1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you are retelling the story and proclaiming our Lord's death until he comes. And it brings strength to what you're doing. And so I just think it's important for a lot of people to understand this. Galatians 2.20, my old identity has been co-crucified with the Messiah and is no longer I that live for the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine for the anointed one lives life through me and we live in the union as one. Communion is needed now more than ever. And, and here's why. As, as I just know 2020 is going to be a great year and the start of a new decade, a lot of people prophesy this. They say, don't worry about it. But the warfare is going to, going to be happening. It's going to enlarge a little bit. But that's okay. We just step it up. We read a little more, pray a little more, fast a little more, believe a little more, get your faith up. And so this is, this is kind of what I like to say whenever I'm going through something. I'm about to put some worship on that. Oh, the devil coming against me on this? I'm about to put a fast on that. Oh, don't jack with me, devil. I'm about to put a 30-day communion on you. And, and it wins every time because God wins every time. So whenever you're going through something, don't worry about it. Put you a fast on it. Say, I'm going to do communion for seven days over this. You'll get your answer. You'll know what you're talking about. See, everybody loves good fun Jesus, right? Good fun, Jesus. Y'all hungry? Yeah. Fish fry. Free. I mean, everybody loved Jesus. And then he said, man, I got something better than this. They're like, what, you got cheesecake? No, we're on a health program. Um, he's like, no, I got something better than that. He said, what, eat my flesh and drink my blood. They're like, that's crazy. I'm the lamb of, the, I'm the lamb of God. He's, they're like, no, we like that fish. We don't, no, we ain't eating your flesh and drinking your blood. And they started leaving. And Jesus was like, oh, they want me to feed them naturally, but they don't want me to feed them spiritually. He looked at his disciples and said, you know, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you, you can't be a part of what I'm doing. Do y'all want to leave too? And this is what they said. No, 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 we're not leaving. We're so committed to you. We'll follow you to the end of our life. We are so committed. That's one reason Jesus didn't have a mega church. He had a small group. Because when he has the hard things, the real stayed. God is raising up a remnant of the real in this last hour. And he's raising up people who are ready. They will do whatever he says, and he will, they will follow him. John 6, we'll start in 53. And Jesus replied to them, listen to the internal truth. Unless you eat the body of the Son of Man and drink the blood, you will not have eternal life. Eternal life comes to the one who eats the body and drinks of my blood, and I will raise him up in the last days. Some of you are about to raise up. God is about to raise you up. Your ideals are going to be raised up. And the Lord was speaking to me that favor and increase and blessing are coming upon people's lives who are fully going for the things of the Lord. For my body is real food for your spirit, and my blood is real drink. The one who eats my body and drinks of my blood lives in me, and I live in him. And 2020 is going to be a year that you're going to do some crazy good things for God. I mean, amazing things. But you're not going to be able to go off of good ideas. You're not going to be able to just go off what you did last year. You can't walk in what you, you did in your knowledge in 2019. You're going to have to get the mindset of God to move forward. And a lot of times when people plateau in life, I'm like, hey, step up a level. Go on a fast. Do communion for a few weeks every night with the Lord and break the cycle that you're in to get to where you need to be. Amen. Well, we're going to get the, the ushers to, to get the stuff in the back. And, and they're going to pass that out. And we're going to do this corporately together. But, but like I said earlier, sometimes you might need to do this, you know, by yourself, early in the morning, late at night, pull aside and just say, you know, Lord, I just, I want to take communion with you. And I always start off with thanking God. He's so good to me. And I just thank God for everything that he's done. And then I remember, I always recite back to him, I thank you, Jesus, for what you did for me. Thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for the, the punishment, the iniquities, the, 
the chastisement, everything, the transgressions that, that you took. Thank you for what you've done for me. And then I always, this is how I do it. I say, God, you've called me to something. And I have, my wife and I both say this to God almost every day. We 100% give you our life. We will do anything. We will go anywhere. We will do whatever you've called us to do. We want to give our life back to you for your service. And the thing is, I always pray this. I've been praying this since I was 20. God put your desires in my heart for me so I live out your desires and not my desires for me. And when you do that, what I, I read in Galatians, it actually happens and it becomes who you are. Th that's why I can work long hours and do different things and not get worn out because it's not a struggle because I'm under grace. I'm under what he's called me. Does that make sense? I'm doing what he's called me to do. Therefore, I, I'm completely committed and submitted to him on that. Does that make sense?